Hey friends welcome what if Naruto was became rave master, Naruto x harem movie. It was a cold evening, the sky was gloomy gray and it was raining heavily, a young boy, no older than 12 years old, was looking through the window of his room at the depressing weather. The boy has short blonde hair that was a bit on the spiky side, soft lightly tanned skin and sea blue eyes, he was dressed in average clothes that consist of a gray short sleeved t-shirt and dark shorts. He was sitting on his bed and holding his legs close to his chest, why, why do I have to suffer like this? One might wonder, why does a young child have such depressing thoughts? If one took a closer look at him, they would immediately understand, his face was covered in small bruises and at some places it was swollen up, his eyes were red and puffy from crying with few tears still running down his cheeks. This boy's name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and since the day he took his first steps his life has been a living hell. You see, Naruto was born in family that was purely made out of Kunoichi and naturally, he sticks out like a sore thumb, but then a question arises. How can his family consist purely out of Kunoichi? The answer is simple. Naruto is the first boy in elemental nations to be born from a union between two Kunoichi, Minako Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki. His mothers are the very first kunoichi in the world who openly expressed their love for one another and they are what one might call lesbians. Manako Namikaze is Konoha's very first female Hokage who earned the title the Yellow Flash during the Third Ninja War and is the fastest kunoichi alive to this date, her legendary skills are also matched by her legendary beauty, she has shoulder length blonde that goes straight with some spikiness in it, sky blue eyes that you can easily get lost in, an hourglass figure with D cup breasts a face that looks like it was sculptured by the goddess herself and beautiful pink lips. Her lover, Kashina Uzumaki, was quite a legend herself. Because of her masterful sealing arts and sword skills she was given the title the Red Death during the Third Ninja War, she has a slender, feminine build, fair skin, D-cup breasts, beautiful violet eyes, fiery red hair with strands that framed both sides of her face and a black clip that parts her hair to the left, keeping it out of her eyes. Kashina also had one very deep secret that only few knew, she used to be a Jinchuriki of the mighty nine-tailed fox, Kayubi. Nineteen years ago, after Minako was declared as the fourth Hokage. The very same day she, in front of the gathered villagers and ninja, confessed her love for Kashina who at first was shocked but quickly returned those feelings. Of course, there were quite a few people angry at such proclamation. Believing that it is a sick relationship and that both of them should find a good man instead. Needless to say these people were quickly and painfully disposed of. But their love still had to face the obstacle in a form of Konoha's council, a lot of civilian councilmen along with the Uchiha clan head, Fugaku, stated that their relationship was impossible, but they were quickly put into their places when the rest of the clan heads including the two elder advisors reminded them that Konoha always respects one's life's decisions and that there isn't a law that forbids love between two females. Not wanting to back down, Fugaku called out on the child problem. He angrily stated that two women can't have a child together, but even this argument was put down when Minako announced that she invented a special seal that would allow her to temporarily gain completely functional male genitals, after that, no one had anything to say and the very next day the two women were wed by Hiruzen, the fantasies of the two beautiful women having sex on their wedding night left many men with massive nosebleeds. After a week past Tsunade, Konoha's most skilled doctor, announced that Kashina is pregnant, nine months later, two perfectly healthy baby girls, Ruka and Kaide were born, they were the living proofs that a union between the two females is possible and any leftover objections faded away. Since that day there was no longer any protest on Monaco's and Kashina's relationship. Two years had passed by and the two more girls, Tasuki and Suri, were born, everything seemed to go well with the all-female family until five years later, a boy was born. There were many shocked people and some instantly believed the child to be an abomination and should be either killed or put into an orphanage. Monaco quickly shot down those proposals stating that just because Naruto was a male born from two females doesn't mean he's a freak of nature, after an examination Tsunade confirmed that the boy was perfectly healthy and had no problems whatsoever with his body, both mothers were overjoyed with their child and named him Naruto, promising a life filled with nothing but happiness, how he wished that was true. The first year of Naruto's life was normal, he was loved and taken care of properly, that is until his younger twin sisters, Miyuki and Shiki, were born in the day the great Kayubi attacked. 
A mysterious man appeared at chamber where Kashina gave birth to the twin girls and took one of them as a hostage. Monaco managed to save the child but in doing so the mysterious man kidnapped Kashina and released the Kayubi, while the beast was destroying Konoha. Monaco confronted the mysterious man and managed to defeat him but before she could capture him, he escaped. Monaco then quickly returned to her village and was prepared to seal away Kayubi at the cost of her life but before she could go through with it, she was knocked out by the previous Hokage. Here is an Serutobi, he took Monaco's newborn daughters and sealed the Kayubi into the two girls by splitting the fox into two halves, Yin and Yang Chakra. When the next day Monaco woke up, it was to the sight of her whole gathered family, she was told of Hiruzen's sacrifice and while she was sad at his passing, she was glad that he gave her the chance to live happily with her family, it seemed things were really starting to look up, except for Naruto. Naruto's journey to a life full of misery started out slowly, at first, it began with neglect as all of the attention was given to Konoha's twin heroes who hold Kayubi imprisoned, they were showered with gifts and praises while Naruto was pushed into a corner like a simple bug not worth mentioning. Then the physical labor began, as Naruto grew into a six-year-old boy. He was now smart enough to talk and to take care of himself a little. He begged almost every day for his mother's and sister's attention so much that they finally had enough. They stated that if he wants their attention so badly, then he must earn it. Naruto asked if they wanted him to become a powerful ninja just like them and the answer he received was a slap to the face by Minako. She yelled out that he mustn't ever dare to mention that again. Her family is now known for being a powerful all Kunoichi family and she wants it to keep it that way. She said that if he truly wants them to pay him attention, then he must from now on take care of the household chores, all of them. Wanting to please his family Naruto did as he was told, but of course, being only a six-year-old boy there was only so much he could do and that often led to him doing mistakes during his work which in turn led to another part of his life's suffering, physical abuse. Whenever Naruto made a mistake or failed to do something at all he was punished, harshly, it began from simple slaps, then to kicks, then to punches, even the tiniest mistake resulted in pain and sometimes, when they were truly angry, they would lock him up in the house basement for a whole day, during that time he would be given nothing to eat and only allowed to drink water, this continued until Naruto reached the age of 10 and as he grew older, so did grew his family's other needs. A very distinguishing thing about him is that he is an incredibly cute and handsome boy, something his family members often take advantage of, his final circle of despair is sexual abuse. It began when one day Monaco returned from a council meeting incredibly frustrated, she was mumbling something about the Uchiha clan head being a pain in the ass, normally when she was frustrated, Kashina would be there to relieve her of it, but since nobody was at home that day except for Naruto and her, he became her frustration's outlet. She grabbed him harshly by his hair, dragged him into her bedroom and threw him on the bed, then she started touching and licking him at inappropriate places, he didn't really understand what she was doing, only that it was wrong, painful and he didn't like it one bit, he tried crying and begging for her to stop, but she would just slap him to shut him up or ignored him completely, at times she would even abuse him more fiercely when he begged. After that day a chain reaction was started as Kashina and his four older sisters also began using him as their frustrations outlet, a year later his younger twin sisters joined in as well. A final question one might ask is, why wasn't anybody helping him, why was such abuse even allowed? The answer once again is simple, no one knew. The villagers and ninja of Konoha are told nothing of what is happening at the Uzumaki Namikaze family home, whenever someone visited the family Naruto would be locked up in his room and they would say that he is sick or if someone does meet him, he is forced to lie about his injuries. So currently Naruto is trying to rest a little since he already completed his chores for the day, house was gleaming like a diamond and all of the meals have been prepared, he just hopes that day will end with nothing bad happening to him. He is about to lay down on his bed until his room's door is kicked open by an angry Ruka, she is a very beautiful girl with a matured hourglass body, she has a unique set of deep red eyes that are only matched by her equally deep red, long hair, think of inner mocha from Rosario plus vampire. Damn bastards, can't take no for answer until you literally beat it into them, she mumbles angrily to herself as she forcefully closes the door behind her. She takes a seat in Naruto's desk chair sticks out her bare feet to him and speaks in a commanding voice, do it. Naruto looks at her feet and slowly crawls towards them before stopping and retreating back to the window, uuumm, Aruka, 
M maybe W we see C cannot D D do T this T today. He says in a very stuttering voice, I D D did all of the C chores today and meals are he was not able to finish the sentence as Ruka grabs him by the throat and throws him into the wall behind her. Naruto hits the wall painfully and falls to the floor, he then feels intense pressure being applied to his head, he opens his eyes and sees Ruka's foot placed on his head while she glares at him with almost pure murder in her eyes, did you just try to refuse my order? I must be hearing things as I could have sworn that you just did, she said with a voice so cold that would make winter seem warm. Nnnu, I am sorry, I I ill do anything you ask just please don't hurt me. Naruto begs with tears streaming out of his eyes, at first he becomes relieved when he feels the foot being removed, but then he starts vomiting and holds his stomach in pain as Ruka just kicked him there, hard. You useless waste of space. You should be grateful that I even allow you to touch me, yet you dare to. Honey, could you come down downstairs? Monaco and I want to talk a little about your recent promotion, Kashina's voice could be heard from downstairs. TCH, you got lucky you worm. But this is far from over, Ruka turns around and walks out of the room, she gives him one final angry glance before closing the door behind her. Naruto painfully crawls over to his bed and lays down as gently as he can, he then covers himself with the bed's blankets, why, why can't I have happiness, I can't, I can't take this anymore, were Naruto's final whispered words before he cries himself to sleep. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
He then pushes his desk to block it in case Monaco had a spare key. He jumps on his bed and holds his legs close to his chest while rocking back and forth, scared beyond belief. He has defied his mother and the retribution for it will be severe. Loud banging and shouting could be heard from behind the door and he knows that he has only little time left before she forces her way into the room. There, must be a way to escape, anything please, I just want escape, Naruto didn't have time to react as blood red runes suddenly appeared in midair and with a flash of red he disappeared from the room leaving only a broken window and blood stains on his bed behind. Monaco broke down the door and is greeted by the sight of a shattered window and Naruto's bed covered in blood stains. NN Naruto, H honey? All of her anger was quickly forgotten and her voice was wavering from the mere thought of her son being dead or worse, being kidnapped. Oh okay. Why you made your pee point? I promise I will stop touching you, Naruto. Kasama. Monaco looks behind her to see her daughters walk into the room as well. What happened here? Where is Naruto? Monaco's eyes are suddenly flooded with tears. Naruto, he, I. She falls to her knees crying, not being able to complete that sentence. XXXXXXXXXXX Unknown Area XXXXXXXXXXX Two women, a blonde and a brunette, could be seen walking down a stone road. So Ellie, when are you and Haru going to finally tie the knot? The blonde woman asked the brunette. Ellie was a young woman wearing a short-sleeved shirt and jean shorts, she also had two unique tonfa strapped on her belt. Well. I was thinking maybe in a few months, by the way Julia, how's his let holding up after that battle with that little boy with the pink eyes? Julia was a mature woman wearing an outfit similar to the ones female wrestlers wear but in orange color, he's fine, but who knew that Brad could turn into a huge turtle? I wish that we didn't have to retreat but we were severely outsized by that thing. Ellie giggles while nodding, yeah, that was bad and music aside oh my god, she quickly runs forward towards a bleeding child that was laying on the side of the road, Julia, we need to find Haru now. Don't have to tell me twice, xxxxxxxxxxxxx later xxxxxxxxxxxxx. Naruto slowly starts to open his eyes, wh where, am, i. Julia. He woke up, he hears a female's voice and turns his head slightly to the right, in his field of vision he saw Ellie and Julia. Wow, he's kinda cute, reminds me of Let when we were younger, hey kid, are you okay we a h h h h h h h The two women jumped back startled from the boy's sudden screaming, despite being heavily bandaged the boy began to crawl away from them but was quickly picked up by a spiky brown haired male wearing a robe, Julia, what did you do? This kid is scared near to death. I swear I didn't do anything, the boy just started screaming when me and Ellie tried to talk, too, him. Julia sees the boy quivering in fear, what the, hey kid are. Julia tries to reach out and comfort him but he flinches away from her hand, please, 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 he begs quietly, let walks over to Julia and shook his head. Julia, I think he has a fear of women, let me and the rest of guys talk to him, he suggests. Fine, just tell me if the kid is alright, she requested, let nods and calls in to two other males into the room. He then turns around and smiles at the scared boy, hey there, kid, my name is Led Dehaka. He then points at a silver-haired young man who has a broadsword strapped on his back, this is Haru Glory. He then points at dark-haired man who had a calm smile on his face, and this is Hamrio Musica. Naruto sits on the ground and holds his legs close to his chest, few minutes pass before he begins to speak in a voice barely above whisper, Naruto, he didn't use the last names those monsters had. Haru nods and sits down on the ground as well so he would be on the same eye level as the boy. My fiancé found you hurt very badly by the side of the road, can you tell us what happened? Naruto shook his head, nmmm, Musica places a hand on Naruto's shoulder, you know kid, we're heroes and we won't let a child cry, not when we can help to prevent it. Naruto looks at the three men and then, hesitantly, at the women, few minutes pass as he contemplates if he should trust them. Guys. I wish you can help with carry the water, a young female said walking up the group, she had short blonde hair that gave a tomboy appeal, she wore a blue dress almost something from a church attire, she stopped when her gaze hit Naruto, ah. Naruto eyes widen as he saw the girl as well, her eyes meet his and something, was odd, his chest was warm and oddly safe. Hum, ah, oh my gosh, what happened? She gasped, running over to the boy, 
Look at these wounds, they're terrible, she said, feeling saddened that such a young boy would be hurt this way. Hey Luca, the kid as Julia started but stop as the blonde hand was took into hers, he look adorable shy as he keep looking down with a bright blush, huh? You poor thing, what happened to you? Luca asked Naruto. I, Naruto mumbled, I don't know if I should tell you. Luca nodded smiling sweetly, it's fine, my father always told me that sometimes it better to not speak it, she said kindly as her hands glow white, stay still. Wa what are you O oh lord, I pray to thee, heal the wounds of this young boy who has suffered greatly, Luca prayed. The young male eyes widened as the bite marks that his mother gave him faded, his skin was more healthy and lastly he felt more, alive, w what did you do? I healed you, Luca smiled sweetly, it comes in handy when used right, unlike some people who think otherwise, she said, glaring at the other males who flinched. What did we do? They yelled comically, hey, he he he, ha 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 ha, Naruto laughed. Luca also giggled covering her mouth with her hand, hm 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 hm, Naruto, kun, please, what happened? I know what I just said, but I want to help truly. Please kid, we're heroes we can protect ya. The man in the green robes declared with a small smile as he moved Luca slightly who pouted. Naruto thought about it for a moment, so far they haven't given any reason not to. They found him hurt and brought him here to nurse him back to health, not like I can survive on my own anyways, I never really was outside of the house before so I have no idea where I am, but I can't just, his eyes widen as he felt the young girl's hand on his, seeing a female kind and hopeful smile made him feel, hope for the first time in his whole life, oh, okay, it started about six years ago. And so Naruto explained them his life of suffering up to now, the three males stood there and listened to the whole story without interrupting him even once, except on some occasions showing disgusted and green faces, then I felt a sudden surge of energy and everything went dark, then I woke up here, he didn't leave out anything in his explanation and didn't sugarcoat any of it as well. Wait here. Let's said as the three males went to talk the females and explain what Naruto went through, the girls covered their mouths in shock when they heard about the molestation part, that's what Naruto thought. It's okay. Luka encouragingly stayed to his side, Haru then walks back over to boy with a smile. Naruto, I have a proposal for you, from what we understand you are most likely far away from home, so how about you travel with us? We are currently still in the elemental nations but at the border of the lightning country and far away from those people. We can train you to become strong enough to protect yourself and do some sightseeing as well, you see, we're currently on our way home and, we would like you to come with us, but if you want to go to another village then we can drop you off along the way, what do you say? Naruto quickly stood up and nodded, please, take me away, I can't stay here, ever, I want to leave. Haru smiles and raises his hand, Naruto flinches until he felt his head being patted, don't worry, I won't hurt you, he brings Naruto to his side. Come on, let's go to Fury. XXXXXXXXXX three years later XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
She was a young girl of 17 years with brown eyes and shoulder-length blonde hair that's tied by a blue ribbon in a small ponytail to the right side of her head with the rest of the hair loose and she also has a buxom and curvaceous body. Her outfit consists of a white sleeveless blouse with blue outlining the blouse and a blue miniskirt always having a belt that held a set of keys and a whip with a heart-shaped end, and she wore black, leather high-heeled boots. Oi, Naru-san, pick up your jaw. Naruto shake his head when his mind wandered to the point that he heard his friend's voice, Um, forgive me, ill wait outside, he said before closing the door again as he sighed heavily, Damn it, maybe I am gonna have a sour day. Wait itisnt what it looks like. The girl quickly got off the counter waving her hands frantically trying to fix the misunderstanding. xxxxxxxxxxxxx thank you, Naruto smiled as the old man passed him the papers he wanted, cradling the papers his arms. A shy smile appeared that made the old man pass out from the cuteness. Uh, sir? He asked worried if the man die for some reason. Wow, the girl smiled at the feet. To get reaction she usually has to wear outfits and even try show some skin to get that reaction, you're deadly with looks. Hmm, how so? He asked looking back at her, Miss, Lucy was it? Yes, that's right, she nodded, sorry that I thought, well what I thought, he apologizes as he walked out the store. W wait hold up. Lucy called out going after him. Naruto eyes widened as she was about to touch him, moving his feet quickly in perfect movement, evading her touch, making Lucy nearly fall on her face. I am sorry, he cried out. Owie, Lucy muffled, man, so much for asking directions to fairy tale. Ding. Asterisk a light bulb in Naruto's head lit up when he heard that. Uh, perhaps I have heard wrong but did you say fairy tale? Um. Yes. Wow, uh, funny you should say that, but I am trying to find Fairy Tail too. Really? She said, standing before him, earning a light blush from him, aren't they the best? Uh, taking a step back to regain his mindset, he nodded, I believe so, my friend wanted to join them, so I would like to meet them. Yes. Maybe we can find the Salamander while we're at it. Salamander? He's the strongest fire mage in Fairy Tail, and ITD be so awesome if we met him. Lucy squealed with delight. What is with this girl? Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Salamander, Naruto twirled a stand of hair cutely as he smiled. I heard the rumors that he is a great fire mage. I believe I can see a few reasons why. Right, Lucy's eyes sparkled. So what did you say? We can find the salamander together. Perhaps but the odds of finding him in this whole country is rather vast, he explained. And this was true not counting the other continents that his parents and those women used to live the odds of finding that fire mage is going to be rather bad salamanders here a random woman voice screeched gh naruto cringed upon hearing the woman screech what lucy asked with a smile let's go or else we miss him all right naruto laughed sheepishly before the two of them headed out to look for this salamander what have i gotten myself into he groaned in his thoughts the two blondes entered to see a huge crowd of women around them as the male blonde teen paled at the amount of women, stay calm, stay calm. Hey, are you okay? Lucy asked worriedly, you look pale. H huh? Naruto snapped out of it to look at her, the girl was about to touch his shoulder but Naruto moved away, as he pointed to the center, there, I think we find him. Really? Where? Lucy gasped suddenly looking in the direction when he pointed. The boy eyes watched as a purple-haired man was dancing in the air with purple flames, almost forgetting the women Naruto eyes show rather a bored look, he isn't Salamander, he said in a disappointed tone, let's go, however realizing that Lucy wasn't moving he turned back, Lucy, looking at her she was blushing and had hearts in her eyes, lust spell? He then looked towards the purple-haired man and saw something in his ring finger that was glowing, that ring, is he controlling these women with that? Igniel. Naruto thoughts broke off as he watched a pink-haired boy enter the crowd and in front of the man, wait, you're not Igniel. Natsu, Naruto blinked, the blonde eyes watched as the girl's eyes started to turn into angry silts, this isn't good, the warrior thought as fangirls are way worse than the woman he is used to, I better nip this in the bud. A small pale green jolt of electricity flow out of his left hand's fingers, as it crawled in the ground and climb up the fake salamander, boom, Naruto whispered before bending his knees. Crack, the purple-haired man gripped his hands as he felt his ring shattered, what the hell? 
Trying to charm these women is one thing but controlling them is another, Naruto frowned, grabbing the pink-haired boy and then Lucy while trying not to pass out or scream he ran like hell when the girls went to the fake salamander. Hey what are you doing? Let me go you Natsu snapped only to see Naruto was dragging him, hey you're that guy. Did you have any idea the insane thing I just did? Naruto said demonically as his body gained a dark and dreadful aura as his hair lifted up making him look like a monster, do you? Eek! Lucy shrieked in fear, Oi, what are you? What's with the mirror? Natsu said as he went backwards as Naruto walked prepared to hunt him. Aiyai XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
The two look at Lucy who looked horrified at the fact of the teen boy being raised by one of the most legendary creatures, yeah, I thought Igniel was here and happy and me came down to look for him. Out of curiosity, did you think that it wouldn't be strange to see all those folks not freaking out if there was dragon here? Naruto asked as Natsu gain a look of realizations. Uh, come to think of it, that would be weird if that happened. So now you noticed, Naruto deadpanned, damn, so much for finding him here in this town. Natsu banged his fist on the table. Smiling he pat Natsu's head in a brotherly fashion, there, there, it's okay, the weight would be worth it, he said as the pink head boy nearly cried at the kindness. Are you sure? Trust me, it builds character, Naruto nodded assuring, sometimes thinking things through is better than doing the right thing I suppose, well while I enjoy the company I must get my ticket, goodbye. Digging in his pocket for the right amount. He placed the bills down alarming the young female woman that he had such amounts in his clothes, she wanted to ask if it was alright to take it, but when looking up he was already gone. I hope to meet him again he's a nice guy to be with. Nom, nom, nom. Deadpanning at the pink haired boy's savage way of eating, Lucy couldn't help but smile at his easy going life. Well I should go too, it's been a nice and interesting way to meet you Natsu. Back with Naruto he was walking down the streets. I have to do some fishing for supplies down the road, he said walking away but frowned as he felt the people around him joking and smiling, fools don't realize that Luca saved them all, arrogant and foolish people. Walking away to head to his life, the life that Luca saved for this ungrateful world, the swordsman glared he stopped outside smiling sweetly like he would for the woman who saved him. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
So that's the reason why the boat is trashed. He deadpanned as he saw a pink haired male flying about with flame covered fists. B O O O O M, you're dead. Natsu roared out, Wait, Natsu? Why is he? Hey, now it all makes sense, Naruto said. Long story? That purple haired perv was kidnapping girls. Lucy stopped as she saw a black aura around Naruto's body, and, Uh, uh, you okay? Wanna take a nap? She comically suggested as Naruto tilted his hat downward. He did what? He uh, it was rhetorical, I heard you the first time, Naruto said as he gently put down Lucy, now stay here, I am going to commit some murder or at the very least break some limbs. Wait wait wait. Don't go killing people, Lucy freaked out. Naruto however was already moving ahead as he unbuttons his suit and his inside vest to allow some breathing room for his body, as he moved the blue mermaid moved towards Lucy. You were planning on nabbing him? Huh? What do you mean? Well, he is cute. Are you planning on grabbing some of that cute ass? The adult woman said with a perverted smile. Cause MMMH. I would like to take a bite of those buns. Just what do you think you are doing? TCH. You're no fun, she said before vanishing, leaving Lucy confused and annoyed. Never knew Aquarius was such a pervert, Lucy muttered. Naruto, however, grabs Natsu with a dark look. I am taking over here, he warned dangerously at the idiot teen that just pouted at him. Hey what are you doing? This is my fight. He's framed me for taking my identity. Now, he screamed dragging Natsu closer to his face to make direct eye contact that made the pink haired man pale, while that single word echoed throughout the town, and the result was a shaky Natsu who gave a weak thumbs up. H hi, he weakly said watching the blonde move ahead, holy crap that guy might be scarier than Urza. All right, you piece of crap. Come out so I can break your limbs, Naruto shouted. The man did so. Whether it was out of courage or sheer stupidity, Naruto didn't care. As the man walked up to the tallest junk pile, Naruto took out his candy bag and started to shift through it, choosing a candy to eat as he waited for the man to talk. So I heard you try to kidnap women? He said, taking out a pasty of some kind, but place it back to look for another. So what of it? They the man felt something wet on his cheek and touch it tch, what? Seeing red blood on his face, the man gapped at Naruto who vanished from his spot to appear to his right side, how did? Funny thing about the past, no matter how you want to conceal it, it will always pop up, like my past on hunting little shits like you, he said turning his head darkly to glare at the man. The way his neck was twisted and his dead like eyes scare the man deeply. He, the man flinched in fear, by the way? Naruto held up something that made the man's eyes widen in horror. This belongs to you? In his hands was an arm. Bora looked down and fainted as it was his. Naruto chuckled as he dropped the appendage, letting it vanish. Idiot couldn't tell a simple illusion like that. Should NT bother playing with the big boys? Wow, you knocked him down without touching him, Natsu said with a wide smile, watching Naruto's demeanor change to a gentler aura rather than his cruel one. It was nothing really, Naruto shrugged, so, what were you saying about this guy framing you? This punk was using my name to pick up chicks. I was gonna kick his butt, then you stole Natsu was about to yell but Naruto's scary dead eyes appear making hitch his breath. Uh, nothing. Good, I hate people like him, Naruto glared at the unconscious man, glancing at his neck with a dark look, could be easy just to drop my ten commandments on his exposed jugular vein. He thought before shaking his head to shake his head of those thoughts, stop it, you're not a killer anymore, you're going to be a hero, like Luka always wanted to be. So let me guess, you're the real salamander, Naruto said. Yup. Nodding in approval, can you take me to fairy tale? If possibly I wish to will wait, Naruto said almost girlishly as Natsu drag him and somehow Lucy as an angry mob follows them, why are they chasing us? I didn't do anything. Lucy whined with comical tears flowing down her eyes. Well I did mess up the town, so, Natsu grinned, before running off, let's get run for it. Hey wait up! Naruto shouted, running after him, as they ran with the crazy destructive teen, Naruto smiled brightly that was boyish and sweet, the smile that he wishes he could use in his earlier life, Luca, our dreams are going to be realized. XXXXXXXXXXXX Unknown Location XXXXXXXXXXXXX A young woman with dark colored hair stopped reading her book as she saw a photo on her crack. TCH. Walking forward, she grabbed it, 
Looking over it she smiled kindly, taking the paper out of the broken frame, and looked over it carefully, it was Naruto a bit younger with the woman next to him, I miss you, my darling contradiction. She was about to put it away, but quickly look around if anyone was near her, and after making sure she stuffed the picture underneath her clothes. And she resumed her reading although now humming, if anyone knew her well, they know that it only happened if Naruto was with her. XXXXXXXXXXX Phantom Lord XXXXXXXXXXXX A young woman with blue long hair, tightly curled at the base, wearing a sapphire blue coat, a cream colored fur trimmed navy blue shawl with a pure white Taru Taru Bozu attached to it, as well as a matching Russian Cossack hat, Juvia wishes someone will love her. The young lady suffers another heartbreak when her boyfriend dumps her for the rain clouds that always follow her, no one wants to love Juvia, she sighed. Looking up, can someone love her with unlimited affections? XXXXXXXXXXXXX Magic Council XXXXXXXXXXXX A woman wearing a white kimono was writing down some papers enjoying the piece until she looked down to notice the newest fairy tale report. A smile came across her face as she a photo of a laughing Natsu, a screaming Lucy and a worried Naruto. Well now isn't this interesting, she smiled wider caressing the face of the photo Naruto with her index finger with a blush dusting her cheeks, the woman spoke with fondness in her tone, I am glad you're still around, grimoire heart's true ace. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
the reactions weren't the best ones. Almost all of the family members started blaming one another for their servant's disappearance, some of them even turned violent and it took both Monaco's and Kashina's strengths to calm them down. The following day, all of the family females decided to continue Naruto's search in secret, whenever they are out on missions, all of them will keep an eye open for Naruto when they have free time. While an agreement was reached, the tensions didn't disappear, Kaide and Ruka practically isolated themselves from the family, they would barely talk to anyone and after missions they would either go to do some training or simply shut themselves in their rooms and come out only during meals or baths. These tensions have continued for years and had somewhat lessened, but only barely. Monaco takes one last swig of her sake, trying to make herself forget about her troubles. Naruto lay on a grassy field as he saw some of his friends sat next to him, a girl with long raven hair smiled widely at him, UMU, I found you vice captain. A woman appeared next to the short woman, almost like she warped into existence, she wore a white and teal howry over her white combat kimono, we were wondering what your days off were like. Oh, sorry Oda-san, Naruto nodded respectfully at the woman, well, as you can see, it's pretty relaxing, want to join? The woman looked around and gave him a confused look, join what? Watching clouds, where I, used to live, I've met a lazy family that would spend days watching clouds and I know why now, it's nice, he stated fondly remembering the very few happy moments of his past. The woman looked at the other female who already took Naruto's right side, a healthy distance away from him, knowing his fear, era, this is peaceful, the girl said folding her arms behind her head. Oda pouted as she joined soon after, but eyes slowly closed, then snoring. Naruto turned his head to hear the other woman giggling, noticing his look she smiled, Naruto, I am glad you trust us, her hand slowly reaching to his body, and maybe one day, she had her hand over Naruto's cheek, I could, we could. XXXXX Naruto eyes open up as he felt the train stopped, he smiled even after the bittersweet memory was fresh on his mind, if only you two were here now, Naruto said. Looking out the window, on his breast pocket was a white and teal handkerchief, a memento of his close friend O. You, Natsu groaned, his face being green as his cheeks were puffed out while beads of tears formed in his eyes. You're still not used to it, huh Natsu? Naruto chuckled. No, he groaned as Lucy started to stir, please kill me. I could get the mirror out Naruto stated as he pulled out a blood-stained hand mirror. Nope, I am good. Natsu stated smiling despite looking like he will vomit at the very moment. You really need to take care of yourself, Naruto said worriedly. Ahem. The two males turned to see Lucy yawning as she opened her eyes to see her two new friends, is it morning already? I, happy cheered, we're finally here in Magnolia. Holy shit. There's a fucking talking cat. Naruto crudely yell out, before covering his mouth, s sorry, Auntie Julia over here. Happy. Natsu hugged the blue cat, that had white bird-like wings on its back, before suddenly choking on its neck. Why the hell you leave me behind? The cat cried waterfall tears, Mirajane caught a lot of fish, and I couldn't fight it, he cried as Naruto covered his mouth with his hand to stifle a small feminine laugh. Seriously? This early in the day? Lucy sighed, I just want one day of normalcy around here? Well, Naruto started as he grabbed his traveling bag from above, it depends on what you perceive as normal, to Natsu this could be normal for him. The group quickly left the platform as they looked at streets where Fairy Tail was supposed to be, the new rave master enjoys being in awe of the busy street, he always wanted to live in crowded places, and this is the reason why, people knew others here, a slice of heaven. So, where's your guild at? Naruto asked, you literally can't miss it, Happy said, pointing to what seemed to be a castle-esque building that stood out from the rest of the town. Naruto stopped as he saw a doll, it was so pretty. Lucy turned around to watch the blonde male blushed at the sight of a cute doll. She smiled as she pushed Natsu ahead, Naruto, well go on ahead, go buy that toy. Huh? Oh okay, Naruto said distractedly, he hated loving cute things, but damn it, it was too cute to pass up. Entering the store, he blushed as he saw little kids, mostly girls, wandering around the store, reaching to the desk. He saw the owner was turned their back, excuse me, that doll in the window is it possible for me to purchase it? Hmm? The shop owner asked, turning around and Naruto saw it was a woman once again, oh yes, it is. H how much? 
Naruto stuttered, I, oh my god, Lord Rave Master. The woman said grabbing a pair of glasses and nearly started to cry, yo you're alive. Huh? Naruto looked incredulous, I am sorry, do I know you? Yes, when Rosemary Village burned down, you saved me and my mother, she stated, before trying desperately to remind him of something, ah, the day the Demon Guard was supposed to be a real guild. Demon Guard, Naruto's first attempt to create a guild, only one village knew that name, and Naruto saw a little girl with coke bottle size lenses always playing with, Marie? Wow you grew up, he said smiling angelic at the woman. I wish I could say the same for you, Lord Naruto, she bowed, before taking a closer look, really though, it's as if the attack never happened to you, time never passing you. The rave master couldn't find the words to explain, I was, in a bad place and after it was done, I rested my eyes for many years, until I had the will to wake up again, the man spoke cryptically as Marie nodded, before moving away from the desk to get the doll. Naruto, this doll is yours, she got on one knee ignoring the looks from her usual patrons, I modeled it after Lady Luca. Marie, Naruto muttered, you didn't have to, I want to, and I believe if I did, she looked down sadly, maybe she could come back. Naruto could understand that notion, more than anything in this decaying world. The world is poorer without her, Naruto ruefully spat out in utter disgust. Please, don't let me hold you up, come back anytime, I always do personalized dolls for a large amount of jewels, but for you, free my lord, she urged him. Are you sure? Naruto stated as he tried to reach for the pocket where his money is, I could at least pay for the M. No, no, the doll maker stated, before stopping, just, just live please. The man looked at her oddly as the woman dabbed her eyes with her sleeve, I pray every night that you of all the members were safe, so please just, just be safe. I before he could finish the woman was dragged back inside by the kids, waving a quick goodbye as Naruto was alone again. He looked down and smiled sadly at the masterfully crafted doll, it really did look like Luca, but he knew that really it was never to be given to anyone, it was too perfect yet she did it for someone like him, thank you Marie, ill cherish this always. XXXXXXXXXXX The young man walked through the streets of Magnolia with the doll in tow, while smiling happily all the while. I wonder if she can make my family and demon guard, he said playing with the doll in his hands, he always did like making things but this was out of his league. Naruto. The man quickly stuffs the doll into the bag as he saw Lucy and Natsu leave a building. Oh is this the place? He muttered to himself as he enters the steps, before he could ask Natsu past him. Sorry, Natsu says we have to save a friend. Well be back, just enter and tell them you want to join, Lucy said, before she went to catch up with Natsu. Huh, Naruto said to himself, they sure were in a hurry, he commented, before turning his attention back to the building, so this is the place, he said, before entering through the door. The man quickly brought his blade to stop a pillar of ice from hitting his face, quickly moving forward he went the ice attack and dragged the blade on it, placing the steel edge on the one who used the attack, the blade rested on the teen's neck, Naruto's eyes became hollow as he laid the blade perfectly still. W.O. Sorry that was for Natsu. Soon as the words reached his eyes, the young rave master's eyes unsettling eyes returned to normal, now slightly ashamed of his actions, it's fine, and he's already gone, something about going to save Marco or something, Naruto said trying to calm his nerves by acting professional, you're part of fairy tale. That's right, name's Grey Fullbuster, huh, Naruto muttered, as he looked closer at him, you remind me of someone I once knew, he blushed softly as he realized to pull his sword away from the ice user, as sorry, flight or fight instincts. It's fine, Grey said, so, you here to join? Something like that, can I speak with your guild master? The rave master asked as soon as he said it, two people walked to him. Once more a blush dusted upon Naruto's cheeks as he saw an elegant beauty with ivory white haired woman wearing a maroon dress and a short old man next to her, but her eyes what made Naruto eyes skip a beat, so, dark blue eyes that held feelings of kindness and love, it twisted his heart greatly as it reminded him of Luka. I am Makarov Drear, the guild master, the short old man said. Hello Mr. Makarov? Naruto smiled earnestly, Musika's grandfather says hello. Hum. Oh, Naruto, is that you, boy? My, you've grown? Makarov said surprised. Yeah, it's been a while, Naruto smiled sheepishly, how have you been? The old man nodded, 
been good with my children. Naruto looked around at the guild also nodding back, it seems fun. He knew that this guild was an odd one and to top it off one of the best, perhaps Luka like it more for its close bonds rather than the title of number one. Oh, my mother told me to hand this to you. Oh, Makarov said, as Naruto handed him an envelope, once he opened it, his eyes widened, ah, now things make sense. I am sorry what? Naruto stuttered, pocketing the papers, the man smiled, is there anything else you wish to ask? Naruto tried to speak but hold his tongue, shaking his head, and no, thank you for your time, leaving quickly he could. Naruto, you can join, it's fine, Makarov said softly as Grey and Mirajane, and soon the rest of the guild looked towards the scene, that past you have buried, right? Yes, and you wish to move on? Turning to face the man, he nodded, yes. Then you can ask, the guildmaster said with a small smile, knowing the pain that young man has in his heart. Makarov san, may I join this guild? Naruto asked as the man nodded. Now you know the answer, of course, my boy, Makarov smiled jovially, welcome to Fairy Tale. The teen bowed respectfully, as Grey pat his back, well, welcome, anyway, Mira, get the stamp. Of course, master. Mira Jane smiled as she went to get said stamp. So where would you like to be and what's the color you would like your stamp to be? Naruto looked at the wooden object, before blushing. Uh, I'd rather not expose my body, not since that time I got stranded on that island full of women with Oda and Luka, he shivered in horror when he took off his suit and the nightmare never ended, even Oda and Luka joined in that horror, before he remembers his sword, if possible he undid the buttons to his suit and placed the jacket, and soon shirt, on a table to show lithe yet muscular frame. He touched the left shoulder as he smiled, and if, you can use white and black? Of course, I don't see why not, Mira Jane smiled brightly, gingerly placing the stamp over his shoulder and carefully press it as she adds used magic to add the color. She smiled as she saw the fairy tale symbol on his arm, diagonally black and white, a rather nice taste, she blushed as she saw Naruto turning red as her hands were on his arm longer than she should have, as sorry. Naruto with a red face only move quickly as he could before putting back his clothing in crazy fast speed, I shall go find a inn, until I save enough for a more permanent residence. Oh, I take it that your mother didn't tell you about the room she rented? I am sorry. Yes, the letter stated that you'd be lodging at Fairy Hills, that's the girl dormitory. Gong. Asterisk the whole room turned to see Naruto's sword drop from his back to hit the floor flat side first, soon his body was devoid of color, eh. You did not read the letter beforehand? Makarov blinked. I am. Staying. At a girl's dorm. Naruto uttered out. Yes, I already had the paperwork completed, from what I thought at the time. I believe Miss Ellie would be living there. He started and smiled as he shrugged with a mere chuckle, but oh well. Naruto raised his arms. I should get her money then. Men and women should NT live under the same house. He tried to persuade the man. While I would agree with you. Your mother would say otherwise, Makarov said, turning the letter around for Naruto to see, it's in the fine print. BB but, every time he said it, his hair comically had hair stains out of place, and his face was so shocked it was almost funny to look at. However he felt a hand on his rear before letting out a sound that many blush, Kya. Stop complaining, we need a cute guy to gawk at, Naruto turned around. With his hands comically shielding his rear end, to see another lovely woman, she wore skin tight brown pants, and a blue swimsuit bra, while dressed rather risque. Naruto blushed at her lovely beauty, she had exotic tan that most women he met never had, her long and wavy brown hair had him memorized as it suited a woman with strong confidence like her. Her eyes nearly tricked Naruto as he believes it was black until peering closely that it was a dark purple. Kana, Makarov sighed, stop scaring the poor boy. Come on. What kind of guy says no to living with super sexy girls, she said reaching towards Naruto, before he vanished from her side, she then looks at where he was before and now to where he is, which was next to Mirajane, who was behind her when she was talking to Naruto, how'd you do that? I'd rather not say, Naruto cleared his throat, Makarov, there must be some kind of mistake. The man shook his head, by the time the paperwork is done, it'll be hard for us to get your money back as some of the money is being used for future projects. Oh, he was defeated, he couldn't ask them to give them his money when they needed it. So you have two choices, A. I take you to the dorms, or B. They do, 
Makarov stated as he pointed to Kena and Mirajane, both of who held whips and chains, as the latter made the chains snap when pulling on them. Eep! Naruto girlishly squeaked as he saw that, eh, eh, I choose a. Very well, Makarov nodded, please follow me, he said, before walking off, with Naruto following him, with the two girls in tow still holding the items, as he paled whiter and whiter as this happened. XXXXXXXXXXXX in Konoha, area unknown XXXXXXXXXXXXX. Suri is smiling as she was plays with a skull in her hand, you can hear weak cries of pain and suffering come from the people around who have some of their limbs ripped off while others are mutilated beyond recognition, Naru, the younger of the second oldest twins spoke cheerfully. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
with a steep tiled roof split in sections by beams being held up by simply wooden pillars paired with arcs. The two wings are each adorned by small numbers of large, arched windows, while the central section's windows are similar in design, but noticeably smaller and more numerous. Each section possesses an elongated, pitched roof composed of tiles. The wings, beneath such roof, have round windows adorning their top part. Sitting in front of the entrance, held up by two pillars composed of stone and bricks, flanking the pathway leading to the building, and each topped by the sculpture of a stylized fairy tale symbol, is a large, mildly arched sign reading Fairy Hills in sober, elongated dark characters, near the entrance. He saw a nice patio with wooden lounge chairs that made him think of summer afternoons while drinking some fruity beverage. Well, I suppose Mira and Kana will take over, come down to the guild hall when you want to take a mission. The master of fairy tale started with a nudge to Naruto's leg, and bring some details for us male members, you lucky son of a gun. For the record, I don't do those kinds of things, Naruto frowned, even if he wasn't afraid of women. He was taught by Luca to be a gentleman, while he did enjoy the female body he wasn't a fool like his uncle Hamryo. The two girls glared at their leader, who just dashed away to avoid any punishment, sheesh, glad to have such a moral biting man here, Kana winked at Naruto who ignored her advance. Don't worry, all the girls here are well behaved, Mirajain said to Naruto, at least for the most part. Excuse me? She merely shook her head, reaching for Naruto's hand. But she missed as he pulled to the side, his face was void of emotions, which neither girl saw, before he smiles charmingly, sorry, I was hoping to look around a bit, didn't mean to move away like that, so please show me, he stated moving a step to the side to allow the white hair girl to lead him. xxxxxxxxxxxxxx the three enter the dorm, as Naruto noticed it was empty before quickly realized most of the female were at the guild. Mirajane pointed to the stairs as they move quickly up, before stopping at the fourth floor. So amazing, I didn't think this had a fourth floor. Kana said, drinking a can of beer, as Naruto's eyes widen. A bit early for drinking, is it not? Naruto stated as Kana winked at him, as she offers him drink. Somewhere it's nighttime, want a drink? She winked, although her eyebrow twitched as Naruto went on. Oh, I like them playing hard to get. Sorry, I don't drink. Oh, come on, one drink won't hurt ya. No, seriously, I can't drink. Oh ho. What's this? Are you a lightweight? Kana chuckled. It's against my religion, he stated finally, males don't drink unless they're married. Well that's no fun, Kana pouted, Naruto smiled inwardly as he didn't really believe in the religion that Luka once followed, but it was good to use when he can. They all stop when they saw a door blocking the stairway. I guess this is my room. It is, Mirajane nodded, go on ahead, well bring the rest of your belongings here. The girl then gave him a white key, almost fairy-like design, which Naruto figured was the guild's logo and Kana was dragged by the kind girl who waved at him, the blonde young man quickly unlocked the door to see large room, almost like a giant living room in mansion, this, is my room? He almost gawked, this is definitely way out of my pay range. However, he noticed some doors, moving the nearest one he saw large bathroom almost built for five, wow, guess the bathroom is for fun quickly checking the others was a guest room, large kitchen, and lastly a game room, mom must be drop her gambling money here, he then inspected more of his room as he had a nice assortment of furniture that included a nightstand, a long dresser, walk-in closet and even a standing mirror that was off to the side. Don't have to spend too much on miscellaneous items, he stated, before blushing as he pulls the nightstand's drawer, and found a few square shape packages, and not one second later, he slammed it, as his head produced steam. I forgot, that stuff, he did find some women lovely, but with his fear, he totally forgot that some would like to, do something naughty things, sighing as he shook his head, one day at a time. Knock 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 Naruto, are you still there? We have your belongings, Mirajain said from the other side of the door. Dad must have sent them, he said knowing that he had few items due to him and his family constantly moving from place to place, just leave it outside, it'll get to it. Okay, and when you're done. Come to the kitchen, Mirajane said before he heard her footsteps fading away, meaning that she had left. Wait, so I have a kitchen while there's another one? He spoke to himself as he realizes that he doesn't have to be near women to make his food, but for now, he shrugged it off as he went to the door and grabbed his things before placing them inside his room. Once he was done, he went out of the room and walked down the hallway of the dorm and into the dorm's kitchen. When he arrived, Pop! 
pop. Asterisk there were the sounds of party poppers as Naruto saw there was a lot of food on the table and above it was a banner that read welcome to fairy tale Naruto. Naruto eyes widen, as he saw many women from the guild around, all wearing light sleepwear, the room they were in was the entertainment room, which had large couch, TV, and a few bookshelves, he would say more, but he had to do the one thing that came into his mind. Crash, the girl's eyes widened as Naruto quickly dashed and crashed towards into the nearest window. Did he know the cake was carrot cake? Kana stated, as the others also wonder. Oh poo, now all the food's gonna go to waste, a young girl with messy light blue hair pouted. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
The last thing we need is you wrecking uptown and the Magic Council writing up another complaint. Shut up, Luigi, he growled before his head was hit again. It's Lucy, Naruto smiled at their silly interaction, before frowning, sorry, but no, there comes nothing from friends fighting each other. Huh? What are you talking about? Think of it as training, Natsu said. No, I rather not, besides, he turns back as gave a look that shows nothing but raw power, I would kill you if I go all out, paying for the food, he left as Natsu eyes narrow before smiling. Now I really want to fight him, xxxxxxxxxxxxx back at Konoha, Uzumaki Namikaze household. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
with her fringe covering the left part of her forehead, and the right side exposed. She has also been seen sporting longer hair in other instances, with two bangs framing her face and her forehead being covered by her fringe. Lackey Olieta, the woodmaker mage of fairy tale, I smell chocolate. Where is it coming from? Kana asked as the girl she saw just shrugged to show her answer. But the door across from the other side opened to see Mira Jane walking towards them interrupted both, a clear smile of sweet smelling treats making her tummy growl in hunger of freed food, ah, chocolate chip pancakes. I want some. A dark skinned girl sporting an orange cat hat has just kicked open her room door, she is Chico C. Hammett, the daughter of the man who owns Fairy Hills, living there for a smaller amount of the rent. Following this loud awakening, the other girls started to leave their rooms one by one, the last one who came from Chico room, sniffs the air as well, I smell pecan waffles too. She was a rather young, petite teenage girl of a slender build, she has light shoulder length hair, dark eyes, and cheek marks, she wears a revealing striped black dress matched with long striped gloves and long striped shoes shaped like an animal's feet, over her striped gloves, she wears another pair of gloves light gloves with dark symbols on them she also sports homemade accessory horns one on each side of her head she is mickey chicken tiger another member of fairy tale and a roommate of chico c hammett they all agreed when looking at each other to keep quiet i think it's coming from the lounge mira jane pointed to the main living room where the kitchen was located nearby all of the girls and kana crept their way towards the lounge of the girls dorms and when they peeked around the corner lo and behold there was naruto cooking pancakes and waffles there were even plates of scrambled eggs and crispy bacon, along with toast, muffins, fruit, each having a glass of milk and orange juice. Who would have thought that the girls would be given royal treatment to breakfast early in the morning? The young man smiled before turning off the heat, with his magic as he was using it as its source from the start, yosh, all done, he nodded to himself, before going to the kitchen sink to wash his hands, after drying his hands with a clean towel, he called out with a loud voice, Hey holy mother of Luca, the young former rave master stated with a surprised yell as the girls were already behind him, thankfully at the table and not in the kitchen. Sorry kiddo, couldn't help but wake up to the smell, Kana grinned widely mostly at the amount of food. Why you're all up already? Naruto stuttered, before trying to recollect himself, this is why he made the food, I, wanted to apologize for leaving here because of the party. The girls all looked at each other slight surprised. The bikini wearing women wink at her neighbor, don't sweat it cutie, we just thought we scared you. This made Naruto release breath of relief at that, l thank you, so anyway I made breakfast, I did some shopping yester oh no. What was that? Kana quickly questioned as she swore the oven behind Naruto moved slightly like it was animated. Nothing, he said taking a step back to lean on it, I owe anyone needs syrup. The blonde reached out a bottle of sweet sticky liquid, eehee, hey, no. The girls nodded as they moved forward and it turned causing Naruto to move away to get away from the large group, the drunken woman pulled down the door and. Oh no! Gah! Kana sat on her behind as she saw a living melon with eyes and a mouth on it, the hell is that thing? Oh no melon, the woman poked it as it jumped back or at least it tried as it was stuck between the metal shelf inside, why does it keep oh no, saying that? She said no longer frightened but just disturbed at the sight of it. The girls looked at the thing. It was a melon, watermelon to be exact, but it was no ordinary watermelon, hey, I know those, a blue haired girl said pointing at it, before pulling out a book, ye, up, just as I suspected, that's a rare oh no melon. Eh, hey, what melon? Levy, what are you talking about? The drunken girl asked confused, with a raised brow. It's one of the most delectable pieces of fruit in all of Symphonia, the kingdom that was torn apart by criminals and hatred until the king. Lucia Raregroove, return and save it. I heard that that they produce a lot of stuff that many counties, including ours, allow trading to happen with low taxes for shipments, basically Raregroove has been doing extremely well from what it was once, the blue-haired girl stated not seeing Naruto smiling at her for saying that, but why is it here though? No the better question is why is it speaking and blinking? Kana jabbed her thumb at the thing as it did blink before saying oh no but more calm than before, she then looked to the boy. Did you have something to do with this, Naruto? Yeah, I was going to make a fruit bowl with it, he said as the fruit started to sweat as it heard that, as it shivered in its spot, but I thought about drilling a hole to collect the juice instead, or maybe freezing then smashing a hammer on it for makeshift ice for drinks. 
Oh no, it said struggling until it popped out of the oven and bounced to the table, thankfully not messing up the food, oh no, oh no, it repeated before flinging itself towards an open window, oh, no, it said turning back it realized one thing, the floor they were in was on the second floor, oh and oh, oh. splat, ah man, Naruto rushed to see the horrifying remains of the fruit on the patio, why do they tend to be suicidal when I get them? He questioned softly as the swordsman never understood why they kill themselves when he wasn't looking, 100 jewels down the drain, again. I mean, you technically were going to kill it to eat, the blue haired girl pointed out. It deserved to die Levy, Kana said still grossed out on talking fruits. Amen to that, Naruto agreed before sighing, sigh, quick question are there any jobs near Symphonia? I don't see why there should nt be any, why? Kana asked. Because I need to get more oh no melons, fresh as they tend to dry out when taken out of the desert, he then raises a finger, yes I know the oddity in that reason, but it's talking fruit, none of the girls questioned him as the answer pretty much was convincing. You've gotta be kidding me, Kana deadpan with a sweat drop, why? Naruto turned back to look at them, thump, thump, nearly all the women blushed as the way the morning light glistened on his body, he actually looked more like a prince than his androgynous looks usually does because, I wanted to eat one with you all, he scratched his cheek in slight embarrassment. Zoop! Kana grabbed his hands, totally missing his somewhat comical horrified look, then let's go, she said far too engrossed in her sudden flare of hormones taking over her mind. Eeh, eeh h h h h the other girls looked shocked at their guildmate. Levy then came up from behind her, Kana, the kingdom of rare groove are in desert locations, and the queen limits drinking for adults by age. That means they have to drink responsible to the point it's even enforced, you'll never make it. You can't go a day without downing a barrel. So, what do you mean so? The blue haired girl said in astonished, she remembers Kana nearly binge drinking enough to kill herself when being stuck in the desert last month. So, I am going either way, and it'll be damned if I fail this as a member of Fairy Tale. You so want to get into his pants? A green haired older woman said before taking a plate and getting breakfast started, I got to work with Zach later so he'll be eating first. Ah! No fair bisca! I got dibs on those pancakes first, Kana protested as she darted for her plate and shoved her aside unceremoniously, first dibs. Naruto just watches as the women ate his food with great pleasure, before pulling out a pocket watch, well another reason is, he whispered to himself as the others didn't hear him was that Luca loved eating one every end of the month, Naruto fondly said before looking like the piece of fruit was still moving, sweat dropping as he had forgotten, they can only stop moving when being cooked, so it was still in pain, ahahe, I feel bad now. Oh, no, xxxxx back in Konoha xxxxx excuse me, a cloaked being went to the small wooden outpost near the large west gate of the wall, may I enter this place? The voice was light and airy, as a young teen would have. There was no answer at first, but then a voice from the other side replied, You may. Dude, stop trying to sound like Itachi. A chunin said as his partner blushed at the sudden loss of his coolness. Shut up, Azumo. The cloaked figure took out a page before nodding, Okay, just two things and I'll leave here. Well, what is it? Azumo asked, taking the paper to look at it, Uh, ink and papers. The kind shinobi uses if possible. The person asked as the two gave the cloaked figure a stern look. Sorry those are for only for our forces only, any item that is bought without permission is forbidden, the other chunin said as the person took a deep breath. Damn, well is everything in order? The figure said as the two chunin looks at the paper, before falling over as snoring came, hey, have a good nap, soon the person pats their heads kindly, as they enter the village, gotta find those spots. The hooded person smiles before she was suddenly turn around to see an incoming fist, and hit the floor quickly losing consciousness. All in all, the plan was working, xxxxxxxxxxxx fairy tale guildhall. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx ah, oh no melon gathering. Naruto smiled as he got what he wanted before sighing, but it's at the kingdom of rare groove, he said with a groan, I really don't want to visit there now, she's going to kill me. He then looked to his small pouch of candy and picked one out, what's today going to be like? He said, before popping into his mouth and chewed on it, sour, just my luck, he took out a sour piece of gum and stick to the paper. Hold on Naruto, 
Makarov said from the bar as he uses two of his fingers to make Naruto come over to where he was. As soon as the blonde did so he resumed speaking, you're going to take some of the members with you. May I ask why? Naruto asked in return as he seems to do a perfect job last time, granted he escaped before the woman can make him and her do the naughty nighttime tango, but the only thing that was ruined was his outfit. Thank the ravestones that he had spares. You're not quite ready to go on missions on your own, you'd need to be an S-rank mage if you are to survive by yourself, Makarov explained. Please understand, the last thing we need is something happening to you and not returning for such a long time. Naruto gave him a stare as he placed a hand on his hips, not realizing some girls were checking his ass out when he did so, Makarov finally sighed, Okay, okay, I want you to teach them not to create chaos, you are the only one, only one, to not destroy anything. I already have enough complaints with the magic council as it is, so take Elfman and Kana with you. Ill pay double, he cried out weakly, only for Naruto to raise his eyebrow to say and, and, free food here for the next week? Make it two and add desserts then it's a deal, deal. You have it? Makarov said, before sighing, at least he's better behaved than Natsu, he thought, Elfman, Kana, get over here. Yes. The dark-skinned man said leaping over to the two were it, as did Kana dragging a barrel of her favorite wine. What's up master? Elfman said as he saw the man gesture Naruto. You will accompany Naruto to Rare Groove Deserts, he said showing the jobs paper, a standard water o no melon that. Makarov rolled his eyes at Naruto's nitpicking nature, gathering, but I fear that one person should nt go by themselves for the desert and another for those melons are tricky to catch, so don't try anything drastic. Yes. Elfman roared as he gave a manly smile to the smaller elderly man, I shall help my fellow and weaker guildmate. Just for the record, I can bench press 200 woe, Naruto shouted as Elfman grabbed him and Kana to rush out of the guildhall, all the while making Naruto cry waterfall tears on his body being easily pushed around, that was not fair man. Soon enough Naruto was talking to the male ticket buyers as he bowed, thank you very much, he brightly said to head to his two teammates with their tickets. We got ahead to the edge of the nearest port before taking a short trip by boat to reach the corner of the desert. Naruto explained the situation as Kana whined loudly at the length of the trip, but Naruto tilts his head to give a charming smile. B. Ut guess who got the first class? He said showing them their tickets were high class. Oh Naruto, you should nt have, Kana smiled, it's just a few thousand jewels, Naruto said simply as if Kana's flirtation wasn't even on his radar. Then again I feel responsible for you two coming, so I wanted to at least lessen my guilt, he truthfully stated as the two looked surprised at his words, oops, did I say too much again? Bad habit, the rave master admits as the two smiled and pat his back to push him in the train cart. Be a man and enjoy your company, Elfman loudly boasted as they enter a rather luxurious looking room as if it was a hotel than a part of a train, dang, this place makes any place look manly. It's just a room nonetheless. Naruto waved off before heading to an honor bar, and pull some drinks, mostly sodas and few beers for Kana, besides we're not staying here long. Oh come on, I wanna drink all the good stuff here, Kana whined. Are you paying for the overpriced stuff? No, but you get what you get, Naruto warned the drinker as she paled, and was slightly aroused by his commanding tone if she had to be honest, I hate spending on things I can get for cheaper. Not even one. She begged with a quivering lower lip along with making her large and glistening with tears. No, Naruto deadpanned while passing her a cheap beer nonetheless, while we are discussing prices, we have to get at least 20 of the melons, anything else is bonuses or for us to keep K. How much jewels are they per melon? Elfman raised an eyebrow, as Kana starting to drink the contents of the canned beer she was handed. I spent 100 just on one, but this is fresh as possible, the way to harvest them, Naruto answered so 20 of them would be worth 200,000 jewels, each. Hearing this, the woman's eyes shot open as she spat out a strong stream of dark colored liquid at Naruto. Pfffft, seriously? She asked wiping a small trail of the alcoholic beverage that spilled from her mouth. Elfman glared at Naruto who brought up the sword that somehow reflected the drink at him, are they? Yeah, I am not joking, they're that good, Naruto answered. You see the melons have a rare condition like cacti can absorb water for as he continues this Kana and Elfman talk to each other. My god 200,000 jewels can get me a hundred barrels of all the purple gold I can get, Kana exclaimed. Hum, 
But are they dangerous? Elfman said as Naruto paled and looked away with some shame. Not, dangerous just, you'll know when we see them, Naruto sighed as the train started to move and thus their job. XXXXXXXXXXX Konoha, Ichiraku Ramen XXXXXXXXXXXX is that how your family greet outsiders? The cloaked person rubbed their cheek from the stinging sensation. Look, I said I was sorry, Kashina sighed, before slurping her noodles, I thought you were someone I knew, you smell like him, she whispered before drinking some broth to hide her comical shifty eyes. Well anyway, I was looking for a place to learn about this place, the person said as they smelled the next bowl of ramen that arrived and nodded seemingly pleased by it, smells nice. Tucci is the best ramen chef around, you'd find no other person like him, Kashina answered, but as for you, accommodations, I suppose I can pull a few strings, she said bowing her head to apologize for her mistake. Not really staying here, just a day, I tend to die if left in one spot ee -hee. the person chuckled stretching the back of their neck. I am sorry. Kashina looked at the cloaked person incredulously. I was kidding, I just don't like staying somewhere, I need to find me, sorry, never mind that, but this is very important, someone is waiting for me, someone I love, the person looked at their noodles with a warm smile as the broth reflected the face of the cloaked figure. I, see, Kashina nodded. Well, I do hope you find them, can I help in any way? Well, first off, I was hoping to know the nearest port within walking distance, and maybe have a friend to take me? The person said taking off the hood to finally show the features to the wife of the first female Hokage. Kashina's eyes widened, the person under the cloak was female, and beautiful, who was she? The woman must be younger than her as there were no sags in any corner of her face and shoulders that were deliciously bare. Those light yet shiny amethyst colored eyes that held strong yet kind power behind them. Creamy unblemished skin that would make even the most perfect marble pale in comparison to its shine and perfection. And her hair short yet enough to drape the back of her nape, my name is Rare Groove, she said with a wide smile to lift her hand, and an unknowing force made Kashina gently held to kiss the limb no matter who saw her doing that, she and her wife have an open marriage with other women ever since their son was missing but this woman made each one pale in comparison for some reason. This took Kashina aback as she blushed, it's, I, um, she managed to say, no words were coming out of her mouth, this girl was the personification of beauty. Come now, she leaned forward with a smile that made the red-haired woman heart skip a beat, will you come away with me? Line break thanks, Jose, Naruto waved to a dark-skinned man as his boat left, tell Maria the first love her cookies as always. See, si, senor, s the man started until they couldn't hear him anymore. Did anyone understood what he said? Naruto weakly asked as he was the only one speaking to the man in some unknown language as the other two members shrugged. Who cares? We're here to find those oh no melons, right? Elfman said, punching his fist, so let's find them. Nope, it's near the kingdom, the closest oasis there is still a few miles off, Naruto passed them, water, it wasn't weird but the fact was that they held up the water like cloaks. Aqua cloaks, they make the users feel no water and no loss of dehydration. You just keep these in your pants, Kana said as Elfman already done it as the water seemed to vanish when it was fitted right. No I, he looked at a nearby box that had an odd symbol on it, uh, just a loan from the boatman. I call BS, Elfman deadpanned, call it what it is, he said before moving ahead, let's go. The three did move on, Kana for one was surprised that the heat was non-existent to them as they just walked as if nothing was burning them, so is this kingdom still bad? She asked as they moved up on a dune. No, Edahem the queen is a kind ruler, when her daughter passed away she lost some of her public strolls to stay in her castle, Naruto explained as he slid down the sand with glee, woo, that is not fun, he chuckled at the childish action. You seem to know her, Elfman said before also doing that and agreed, it was pretty fun. Not, on a personal level, in fact most of the land until you get near the islands between Fury and here, and the other side of the desert where the kingdom of Symphonia is, she almost the most well-loved ruler. Naruto trailed off, robotically as possible, oh shit, Naruto looked away as they saw people coming, before diving into the dune. Crash, seriously? There's a window in one of the sand dunes? Naruto screamed, muffled into his hiding place as the fairy tale member's eye twitched at his luck with a deadpan. I am getting worried now, Kana muttered, 
The two watch as a large armored night lizard, a giant one stride towards them. Avenue, honor to meet you in the sands of Grove. The man greeted the two mages, might you two be from Fury? What's it to you? Elfman asked, cracking his knuckles. You should be aware, today is the festival. He raised his blade dramatically, and we welcome you all, so please join us, he winked cutely. Blah. Elfman turns back and releases his stomach contacts from the horror show of a masculine man doing a cutesy pose, while Kana just stares into nothing from the soulless eyes she had, that was disturbing, so no. Fair enough, he said trying not sound hurt as his other comrades had stifled chuckles. The knight gave a kind smile before waving his arm to gesture the sandy area. Well, be careful, we have lots of squads looking for this young man for some time now, he showed them missing poster of a young man that made Kana jaw drop. Handsome man, ain't he? The queen's missing son. Be sure to find him when you can. The knights were gone as Naruto crawled out of the sand covered in glass shards. Uh, this is gonna take a while, he said, gingerly, pulling out a glass shard one by one. Ow, ow, ow. Why Elfman asked not at all pleased that Naruto might be a criminal, if he explains the reason it would be fine that the crime was small knowing most of the guild had bigger crimes like Kana billing a magic council member with her drinking tabs, and Natsu constantly destroys more things than actual natural disasters. I stole a sweet roll, those guys are relentless, even though it's been years Naruto gasped out as he popped the remaining shards of glass at once, dusting himself off he gave a weak smile, seriously, one sweet roll. Elfman however look at the knights retreating into the horizon, they said the knights have been patrolling for a while right? He then turned his head to Naruto, mind letting us know why? The blonde sighed as he pointed to the location they will still head, I shall explain, with that, they walked to a smaller pace than before as Naruto aqua cloak turned more solid to cover his face, around this area, the knights take any and all crime doings to the castle, the queen makes the punishments. All? Kana stated as the duty seem, redundant, not untrue, Naruto chuckled as they saw the gates of the castle, we go past here and we should reach our area, so where was I ah, right it was like that and punishment went down. Elfman nodded solemnly at that, a man must make a tough choice. Ha! Huh. The two looked at Naruto who laughed at that, let's come to this festival, you'll see for yourself, he said as the rave master pull out his sword, wait, he said as the two other members of his guild watch him trace a line damn already this time of year? What's wrong? Elfman walked up to the line, a trap. No, the problem is, well whatever, he said standing up giving them a thumbs up, no worries, over this sand dune is our objective, Naruto said as he pointed towards the large obstacle in their way. There they saw the largest amounts of blue colored rocks on top held the melons they seek, some smiling and others sleeping giving the z's in their eyes. Naruto smiled as he was going to get a great payday. Kana smiled as she was going to have good payday to have fun with the cutie she was hoping to spend time with. Elfman frowned as he hoped to have a challenge this time around. XXXXXXXXXXX thanks so much for coming along, you were a funny person to hang out Lady Kashina, the woman that Kashina was tagging along with for days, kindly said to her, they were on the quickest ship towards the woman's destination, at first Kashina wanted to get into her pants but not she really like her as a close friend and still hope to get into her pants. It's, nothing, really, but I had tons of fun, so it made my day. She smiled brightly, well, days technically, the silver-haired woman pointed out as they have been together for a while, don't, you work as a shinobi or have a family. She said realizing the fact that her friend wasn't an airhead and knew what responsibilities are. Both in fact, Kashina answered, it's, difficult to maintain that kind of balance between those two. Hum, the woman nodded with slight forlorn in her eyes. I know, but sometimes you wish you can still have that difficult than none. I suppose, the silver-haired woman said, Kashina looked at her friend wondering if prying into her personal life was really appropriate for her, since they only met for a few days, but she watched as the silver-haired woman grabs onto the railing then places her elbows to grab her chin. Sigh, my son is missing, the woman said looking at the ocean that they've been staring for hours, I think he hates himself. She started to continue her pupils looking downward for a quick moment, no longer registering Kashina, all because I was too, stubborn to visit my daughter who left without as much as a goodbye, the woman softly whispered as Kashina couldn't help but place a hand on her new friend's own. I am sorry to hear that, Kashina said, I am sure if anything, he still loves you and your family. 
I, don't doubt that, but I worry for him, he's my son in all but blood, the woman said before looking at the red-haired woman, what about you? Got a small family like me, or your husband can't keep in it in his pants. Kashina blushed before huffing, I am not straight, I am happily married to a wonderful girlish woman that is my wife, she said, ignoring how oddly hollow that sounded to her. Peefed. Seriously, I thought you'd be beating your man with stick? Wait a minute, if you're married, and your wife is a girl, duh on that part, then why do you have children? The woman placed her hands on her hips, before paling as Kashina got a dark smile on her face, before whispering something to the silver-haired woman. In three seconds the woman's face became slightly red. In the next five seconds, she lost her composure and looked startled as she quivered at Kashina's detailed explanation. And the last five seconds, which felt five hours, made the woman totally red as Kashina friend's oldest daughter when she meets with her son. It was kinda cute to see a proud and honest woman become so baffled in a moment from her telling her little jutsu that she and Monaco made to have fun. Why you, actually am him, the silver-haired woman felt numb, and was about to faint right then and there. I bet the entire village had a massive bloodbath. Well, the males in the shinobi and civilian councils did. Kashina gave a smug smile about that little victory. Even Danzo couldn't help but cover his nose, but yeah, we were going at it. We find every excuse to do it angry sex, makeup sex, afternoon sex, sleeping sex, you name it. And we got so many daughters because of it three sets of twins. Three sets. The silver haired woman gawked, yup. Barely a month after we got married we got our first set of twins, Kaide and Ruka, then we made sure not to keep it in when she cream pies Kashina. Right sorry. The red haired woman raised her hands when the other woman pulled out an axe to keep her silent, we got our other two girls, Suri and Tasuki. next is she stopped short as the fact that her missing son still brought back some bitter memories, the next girls are my youngest Miyuki and Shiki, they just started on becoming Chunin, she said as she explained the system of ranking to her friend. Wow, big family and no males, the woman giggled at the thought of an all-female family, my husband would have run from the hills, he could barely handle me and Luca by himself. Oh you're married, Kashina said as she went cold, crap she was going to seduce a married woman. Actually no, I am a widow, my husband passed away before my daughter, so I am alone, she said not once sounding weak or saddened by her words, I know the two would slap my cheeks and told me to buck up. I see they must love you a great deal, they did, the silver-haired woman smiled softly, although not as much as your wife, how are you not in a wheelchair popping out all those little tykes? The woman teased Kashina who blushed as she playfully punched her new friend. Oh stop, it's going to be your turn, ah ha ha wait what? xxxxxxxxxxxxx okay so, that's going to be more money than I need, Naruto said as he looked behind himself to see dozens of the melons following him and his friends. How the hell did you get them to follow you? Kana said, astonished by the number. OWWW. The two smiled weakly as some of the melons weren't bouncing like the rest, rolled gently to keep Elfman's slump body from not moving so much, I didn't think I would lose to fruit. This is why I told people not to mess with these things, they gang up on you if they see hostile forces, Naruto chided lighting at the man who started to attack the melons only to be pelleted down by them leading his defeat. The three saw the gates of the rare groove Naruto took a breath as they reached the closest guardsman. Halt! He said turning to the fury group, showing them he was blindfolded earning a sigh of relief from Naruto, identify yourselves. Oh, we're from fairy tale it's a guild in fury, yes we once had others came here from your country, the guardsman said, despite interrupting Kana he still had a tone of respect. The card user nodded as she took out a piece of paper, um, not sure if you can read this but. It's fine, I can use magic to feel the words, the man said as Kana passed him the paper, and nodded, watching his finger glow as he touched the paper. Ah, oh, the oh no melons, how many do you have? About fifty, Elfman said getting up from his spot as the guardsman shuffled his feet in slight worry. Hmm, we only got enough payment for forty melons, oh hold on, he said taking out three cards, most of the guards were given this as a fun past time, but sadly I can't really enjoy them, given this he pointed to his blindfold, these allow you to go the festival we're having free of charge and even get you to see the big dance this year. Dance? Kana said as the man nodded, yeah, a lucky girl gets to dance this religious mumbo jumbo stuff, but the tourists eat the stuff up, this year's cutie is going to blow some minds I heard. 
Kana smiled as she took the cards, so can you get the money ready for us when the festival is up? Can do ma'am, he saluted as the woman moved ahead as did Elfman, but the last one looked down before following them, he didn't really plan on coming this early. XXXXX whoa. Kana eyes sparkled as she saw the city bustling with life and people, stalls of food and games were playing all around them. Free drinks, free drinks, courtesy of our queen. The woman couldn't react fast enough to grab a mug that the person was holding, before smelling its contents with a satisfied moan of pleasure, wine, she muttered before sip hey. She looked into the mug to see it was all gone. Haha look at the newbie, a man on the streets with a red flush said, hey you gotta keep yourself calm, otherwise you can't remember you drank it. Kana smiled as she had remnants of the booze she had and it was good, and that was the aftertaste, before she was about to get another one. She saw Naruto getting one and passing it to her, here. The woman blushed as his sincere looking eyes meeting hers, thanks, she muttered oddly meek to met his gaze, but soon lost that thought as the sweet yet savory drink was flowing down her throat, damn this is so good. A cute boy, a great drink, and lively atmosphere, what more can she want? We got a problem. The two watched as they say a knight screaming in the middle of the street, the dancer was injured so we are unable to do that dance this year. We are so sorry everyone, the person announced before loud cries of disappointment came, as well as Naruto who also sighed in a sad manner. Man I was kinda hoping to see one more dance, I always loved watching the dancer doing the modern magic effect work, Naruto said as Kana nodded, before remembering something. Naruto did have a rather odd way of moving when getting those melons. Then an evil yet smart idea came into her head, Naruto, what dress size are you? The male eyes widened in horror before he could stop his brain from speaking, sighs. XXXXX no way. Kashina said as they finally docked in the nearest land possible, you mean that you live here? She pointed at the sandy area all around them, that's so dumb. Hey I don't literally live in the sand, I got a place nearby, she said pointing behind her back on where her life was usually at, anyway, I hope we can meet up again miss, huh, wow for a week I did not ask for you last name, wow she said with a slight blush on her face, or give you my name. He, it's quite all right, Kashina assured, I suppose when you're hanging out for so long, you forget about everything else. Well anyway, tell your full name and I will tell you mine, she said scratching the back of her head, it's kinda how things work here in the western side of the world. Well it's Kashina Uzumaki, she said making sure to use her first name. Uzumaki, the woman said taking a step back from the red-haired woman. What is it? Did I say something wrong? You said, your name is, Kashina, Uzumaki. Her eyes back like steel almost ready to pierce Kashina's head if needed to be. She turns around and spoke, never come near me again, she orders before moving to the desert. W wait, what? Kashina jumped back at the last second pulling a kanai when she saw a red flash, to see a large area of the sand turn to glass. Hey, I thought we were friends. She said getting angry that the girl she wanted to sleep, then befriended due to their little trip, with became so aggressive, until she saw tears in her eyes. You hurt my son, I won't let you ever near him again, I swear on the name Rare Groove, she said before running towards the sandy wasteland as Kashina only could reach her, until she was out of sight. What, just happened? Kashina said wondering, she stopped before her head unconsciously tilted toward where the woman was heading, until a shadow appeared next to her as her head felt clearer, ah, my mind is muddy, I really hope, she can explain to me what has happened, she said before looking at the shipowner, hey that desert, it has a town or village right, she asked knowing that the woman was heading to a place of civilization, the man nodded, yes the kingdom of rare groove, it's not too far if you lightly dressed and prepared, I reckon that woman knows her way around as she has been asking me for rides since her son was missing, the sailor stated as Kashina nodded, before quickly taking out some paper in case she had to summon her allies to tell Monaco of emergencies, can you find a way to mail this to her? I want to apologize for what I did wrong. Of course, the shipowner said, taking the paper, is there anything else you want me to do while you're here? No, I guess just take me back home, she kindly requested as the man began to adjust everything for the trip. Ah, Kashina once again turned back in the direction where the woman was heading, but it felt like something else was there, someone she needs to be with. Kashina lately notice, for some unknown reason, stop whatever she is doing at that time and looks at one specific direction for several minutes with a glazed over look in her eyes before snapping out of it. 
Monaco had questioned her about it but Kashina would always answer that she herself doesn't know why she does it. What is unknown to the family is that Kashina's own natural instincts to mate are acting up, this only ever happens to a fully blooded Uzumaki. This instinct urges a male or a female to seek out an Uzumaki partner to reproduce with. Kashina's cheating is partly influenced by that, as she only prefers having sex with Uzumaki blood relatives. At first, this instinct within Kashina was dormant since her original home village, Uzushiogakir was destroyed and every Uzumaki male within it was killed. When Kashina married Monaco and later gave birth to Naruto, her Uzumaki mating instinct began to slowly awaken since a male with some Uzumaki blood in him was present, but now that he is gone, the instinct has fully awakened and is demanding Kashina to find him. What Kashina will most likely never realize is that the reason she sometimes looks at one specific direction for several minutes, is because her instinct is telling her that she can find Naruto in that direction. Naruto, are you there? she said longingly, until the shadow returned as an eye was now visible, glaring into Kashina's backside as the woman's face of longing turned into a bitter one instead, I will drag you back, the next time I see you, she growled turned back to barely miss the shadow as its single seemed to be pleased with the result. XXXXX. Kana and Elfman mouths dropped from watching Naruto walk towards them, inside the stage where the curtains hide in the back, okay, if I had you now, then you before you wore that we would have to take a week in a hotel before we get back home, she suggested as Elfman didn't register it, cause you were really clicking all my buttons in the best way possible. I didn't need to hear that, Naruto blushed his right hand clutching his left arm from the embarrassment from his guildmate words, it's humiliating enough as it is. Hey, you are saving this festival, a woman said entering the three's conversation by using a pair of crutches to walk, as her left leg was covered in bandages and surprised that your girlfriend is my size and even cuter than I, she nodded to Kana who gave her a thumbs up while Naruto had a comical weight that said girlfriend hitting his head. Thanks she is too shy to see it sometimes, the drinker giggled fairly while Elfman pats his fellow mons back, it wasn't the manliest thing to wear a dress, but it was manly to put his pride aside to keep this festival going. It's okay, buddy, you're on the path to manhood, it builds character. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Naruto sighed heavily, his dignity be damned, but as soon as he, oh fuck, I am going to cross-dress in front of the whole kingdom, again, he added that tidbit to a low whispered thankfully either of his friends heard that. Why are you caring about that? I mean you're not going to come back here, Kana said as she started to comb his hair for the hairstyle that was needed for the dance, look everything is going to be okay, alright? She said moving her head next to his to let him see her smile which comforted him, until three seconds later that he realized that Kana was near him and he started to shake in fear from his fear of women. I am sorry, please, don't touch me, Naruto said, moving away from her. Oh okay uh, just let me use the comb to lengthen your hair, spiky or straight, Naruto said, as he needed to distance himself as much as possible, as Kana soon used a little amount of magic to allow Naruto's hair to come out the way he wanted it to. She tapped his shoulder as soon shears were chanting dance, 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 outside of the curtain, okay so, he turned to the injured dancer with a blush on his face, was it light or dark this year? Light, Naruto nodded before placing two fingers on his throat, ah, 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 with each small sound he made, it became more feminine and realistic before nodding, take your seats, he ordered as his voice was the perfect mixture of royalty and mysterious that only captivates their hearts. He didn't care to hear their responses as he sighed when he saw the curtains parted and risen to the ceiling. All right, you got this, let's just get this over with and go home, Naruto thought to himself, soon he heard the band starting the music and soon let everything go. XXXXX Hey Captain, you wouldn't believe what they were serving, an armored knight talked to one of the people that meet with the odd trio from Fury, holding a plate of tacos, before the lights, that came from the walls for spotting suspects to hit the stage. Ooh, the dance is happening. They all saw a young girl, the captain eyes tense before looking at the man, let the squads surround the back of the stage, and get me one of those, he said greedily take the food from his fellow ally. The captain watched the boy with long straight blonde hair that flared out behind her with some pulled to the sides and tied off at the ends, the shorter layers dipped between his eyes and to the sides of his face, a band settles atop of the boy's head with a white veil extending down to his shoulder blades pale white fingerless gloves stretched up to the feathered edges at the teen's shoulders. Covering them since his dress does not, 
The long dress sported azure flower designs on the hips as well as the blue criss crossing about the bodice. The color also does well to frame the cutout on the right side of his waist. Also, a single baby blue ribbon is cinched about his waist with the tails fluttering down to her knees. Only one leg donned white stocking while the other has golden accessories clasped about her thigh and ankle. Damn Luca got nothing on him, the captain chuckled at that sight he beholds, before deadpanning as many males and females were blushing at the sight, if only they knew. In the white light TT, Naruto started to sing angelically as the whole audience went silent to hear that perfect voice, his right arm raising up towards the sky. A hand reaches through, his left now opposite to where it stood but in a swift instant that small trails of black and white motes of magic started to float like oil in water, fluid yet never fading away. A double-edged blade cuts your heart in two, soon he began to slowly move his arm around creating more of the dual-colored energies, soon spinning in place as singing continued without a single mistake. Waking dreams fade away, embrace the brand new day. He took a step forward spinning once more, as he knew it was time for the big moment, shifting the energies to move in front of him before walking towards it to cover him in mesmerizing sparkles. He smiled as the whole kingdom and his team was in awe of his dancing. Sing with me, his voice boomed out as energy started to take form, of another woman but the shape was very familiar to many from the dress to the hairstyle. Naruto leaned forward as did the shape, to gently grasp each other's hand, and both sang out the next line. A song, of birthrights and love, the light shatters too, the skies above. The two spun and soon started to float into the air, as the duo began to shift around each other gently mimicking each other's moments while gazing lovingly at each other. D.A. W.N. breaks through, the gloom, white as a bone, as the two separate from each other's holds. The whole sky was flooded with blue flames as Naruto floated down as the other shape was ascending to the heavens. Lost in thoughts, all alone, soon when his feet touched the ground he fell to his knees, eyes glistening from the song and the subtle pain of what he did, as the song pans out. Holy hell that was perfect. Kanas shouted at the whole experience and soon was followed with dozens of agreeing on voices, encore, 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 she chanted before everyone else also joined in but. Dark, 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 Naruto blushed, as he didn't want to perform that well before nodding, looking at the band and making a circle with his finger, he had to do it or else the mood will be a ruin. Soon he heard the band's tiny sets of drums being played expertly before smilingly, but in a very dark sense. Kana Hart nearly leapt from her heart from watching Naruto's gentle act becoming, sensually given his smile that made her resist the urge to lick her lips, watching his shoulders roll with each beat, as he raised his hands, this time to frame his face and his voice moaned out the words. Embra, C.E. the Da, R.K. you call, a home, he tore apart his hands quickly as he started the song before moving them around his body erotically before he stomped to each beat perfectly. Gaze upon an empty, white throne with the last stomp, he used the energy of it to wiggle his legs to his whole body in the shake to captivate the audience, before winking at them, then moved his hands to cross them to capture his face, as the energies, this time in grey, were moving erratically from his fingertips, then ripping them away once more to watch as the energies make another form, a strong and masculine teen holding a dark like a blade. A legacy of lies, he sang as the being was now attacking the energies that were about to attack Naruto, almost scaring the audience to scream before the grey energy being slashed down, he raised his hands as he cocking his hips in perfect timing with the beat once more, to end it he brought them down together clockwise to make more enemies for the man to fight. A familiar disguise, he raised his hands as he cocking his hips in perfect timing with the beat once more, to end it he brought them down together clockwise to make more enemies for the man to fight. Naruto gave a dark grin as his voice shook the whole world for his next line. See, ing with me, a song, of conquest and fate as the being was being swarmed with hundreds of enemies to battle. Naruto continued to dance his alluring ritual, twisting and turning with every moment he got, rolling his hands to just create even more enemies to be destroyed. The black pill, AR cracks beneath its way, GHT a small bow to the audience before he shot his body upwards to show two symbols of what nearly took his life and happiness, a leaf and an odd symbol that had almost looked like Z's, before the blade of the energy being sliced them away. Knee, GHT breaks through, the day, hard as a stone, as the being fought the last of the enemies, the sky was once more aflame with grey fire this time, as it took seat with his sword on its shoulder, slumping before vanishing while Naruto danced happily moving his hands to his hips and turned once more. 
Lost in thoughts all alone, as the music died down he placed a single hand on his chest where the necklace the dancer gave him, glow brilliantly, he threw his hands up as he fell to his knees once again, with a strangely satisfied smile. XXXXX we gotta leave right the fuck now. Naruto said ripping the dress off the second the curtains hide him and scream of the people demanded more, I am not doing the last song, it's impossible to hide this body any longer. Sure. Kana muttered dumbly as she had little hearts coming from her head, yeah. I think she's broken, Elfman said before smiling proudly at his friend, well you stuck through it and gave them an encore, like a man. Yeah, whatever, let's just get the hell out of here, Naruto said until he heard the stage door opening to show dozens of rare groove knights flooding their escape, the group, all stopped as the knights surrounded them, well, 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 thought you can escape from us, eh Naruto? The captain said before turning red when seeing the nearly nude Naruto and turning around, men, let him dress first. Aye aye, thankfully he was already donning his clothes as he cleared his throat, knowing it was game over for him, damn, was sure to leave before I got caught, Naruto said as he watched as the man walks up to him, when reaching within arm's length they stared into the eyes of each other. Sniff, oh no, Naruto balked in horror, damn it, taking a step back, oh okay, Alois, calm down, he pointed to the captain, a knight wearing bright white armored from head to toe. Hey, mind moving out of the way? Kana said, getting in front of Naruto, before the others all got near Naruto as well, she wasn't going to let them stop her plan on getting him a lot better with drinks if they. Sniff, times twenty. The two fury natives looked confused as the rest all did the same noise, noticing some were about to cry. W-A-H-H-H-H-H-H, Elfman and Kana stood there as twenty-one tough-looking men all cried and latch onto Naruto as if he was their missing family member. Why did you leave us? Did we hurt you? We're sorry. Was all they heard as they dragged Naruto to the ground almost eating him alive. The only part of Naruto they saw was a hand reaching for something before it made the thumbs up sign, as it was soon taken down too. Elfman? Kana said with a wide eye twitchy smile, yeah? He asked as his eyes were overshadowed by his horror of watching this odd mission unfold. Let's never cause problems in fairy tale if it means less crazy moments like this, okay? Why yeah, xxxxxxxxxxxxx all this, for a fucking treat? Kana screamed out, liking a boy wasn't supposed to be this complicated. It was supposed to be something sweet, then a kiss on a cheek, and a few dates later him bending over her and giving the best night of her life. And now they were in the castle of Rare Groove after enjoying a rather nice festival and a great amount of jewels for their little mission, waiting for the queen to show and she was hoping to show the girls the pictures that she was able to buy after Naruto's singing and dancing. The three were kneeling down with the knights, three for Naruto and one for other fairy tale members, holding them in place with hands on their shoulders, watching as dark-haired, not mention evil-looking, advisor talking to other knights in rage. How the hell did it come to this? Elfman grumbled. I am sorry, Naruto said as Elfman shook his head, don't worry, well get your name clear, but why did they want you? The man said before Kana smirked. Well, maybe the queen wanted to hit that, she said before the knight used more force, making her flinch in pain, gay. Hey, lay off, Naruto ordered, surprising the follow guildmates as the armored figure nodded and lessened his force on the drinker. The woman looked at the two before wondering why that happened, however, that was cut short as a dark growl escaped from the advisor's lips. Are you sure? A dark haired man said, talking to one of the knights who just came into the palace, ahem. The queen is late, so I shall pass down judgment. Ah damn it, Naruto muttered as the man stood before him before gesturing his arms, dude, no, please no, he said closing his eyes as if about to experience the worst wedgie in his life, this was not from fear, but in the fact that he will have to live with the shame. I don't like it any more than you lord Naruto, but we both know if she was here, well, let's get it on, help the young lord up to his feet. The older man said as the knights while still keeping their grips on Naruto, help up stand up as the dark haired man stepped forward, while ignoring Naruto's violent and comically head shaking. Please don't, come on, ah geez you're hugging, he's hugging me, Hubert, please let go. Naruto harshly begged as the man gave him a gentle embrace as the Naruto's two allies nearly laugh at this stupid punishment. Glad to see you're actually getting used to my son Hubert. Naruto's eyes widen as he heard that lovely mature voice, almost a melody of perfected calmness and lovingly tones in perfect unison. 
Kana eyes widened in amazement when she saw the woman from behind the two males hugging each other. Which she would ask Lackey to use her woodmaker magic to try to recreate, to see a lovely woman with ivory silverish hair color, she had two long bangs that capture her face in perfect manner, the rest of hair cascaded downward like an ethereal waterfall, to match this, she wore a formal yet elegant ball gown that frames her body well, her light lavender eyes filled with whimsy that watched two male embrace before Naruto kicked the older Mon's shins as fell downward. Whoa, who's that? Elfman got out, she was even prettier than his older sister. Did she just say, son? Kana managed to say, wondering why the queen of Rare Groove was addressing Naruto by that title. Naruto watched the woman to face stride towards him, with each step befitting of a queen, gently, yet the pose she had showed that the royal woman wasn't weak, you are the ocean's grey waves, she sings softly as Naruto features became soft with a smile in the process. Queen Rare Groove, he crosses his right arm across his torso, before the woman grasp him, not at all triggered his fear as he could feel her shaking, something was wrong, she always hugs him to the point that the knights had to pull her away from him. I am sorry, she whispered, hoping her mistakes didn't cause things to affect Naruto. What's, wrong? Naruto asked, the woman pulled away to take notice off her daughter's best friend and honorary son, it's nothing, but, she said looking at the young man with a smirk, you and your friends are staying until you tell me what has happened since you woke up. The boy could only laugh nervously at that while Kana smiled at this, bonus points if she can get the approval from his mother, if that was really his mother. Elfman, just stood there trying his best to look manly, as he had no idea on what to do. The queen as she held her son prayed that Kashina would never realize her son, Naruto was at the country, she can only hope, but things always harm Naruto no matter what, you look happy, the queen stated with a soft smile enjoying the blonde beautiful boy enjoying his new life with fairy tail. Naruto smiled at the kind praise as he copied her gesture, you look sad, he said knowing that the woman that he knew for many years was in pain from body language thanks for watching.